Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary Miller here with Sue Bird, a former WNBA player and the founder of Together. Thank you so much for joining me today, Sue. Thanks for having me. So Sue, what's it like? Can you tell me your journey on becoming one of the most successful and decorated WNBA players of all time? Um, I mean, it started out, you know, just as a little girl who was a classic tomboy, got into all the sports. Uh, basketball was the one that stuck. And, um, you know, through obvious, you know, a lot of hard work and dedication, all those things, um, but also a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Mm -hmm. um, you fast forward, you know, 20 plus years and I'm sitting here now. Yeah. So can you describe some of the challenges you faced being in a male dominated industry and how you overcame them? Yeah. Um, you know, the biggest challenge is, is having people constantly tell you you don't have value that um, you need to get back in the kitchen, quite literally, you know, people will, will, will say that. Um, so really just trying to remind yourself that you do have value, remind yourself that, you know, women's sports is important for, for reasons that go beyond just being able to make a career out of it, the impact that sports has on society. Um, you need, you know, women's representation in that. So just, just a constant battle of trying to remind yourself that you do have that value. I think it's something that a lot of women can relate to in, in whatever career they're, they're in. So it um, wasn't always easy, but that I think by far was the biggest challenge. So could you talk about the pay gap between men and women in sports? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think a lot of people, when it comes to the WNBA versus the NBA, a lot of people get caught up in the, the, the actual numbers. Oh, how could you, you know, we'll hear things like, how could you expect to get paid the same as the men? They're watched more and they're doing this more and that more and that. And the reality is that's not, when we say, you know, equity and equal pay. We're not talking about all of a sudden waking up and being paid the same amount that an NBA player is getting paid. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is give us the chance to grow our business in that way. Give us the investment to grow our business in that way. Give us the media coverage opportunities to grow our business because the NBA just didn't happen overnight, right? It, it took those different investments, if you will, um, to get to that point for it to grow. And it took time. But for women in sports, um, WNBA especially, um, a lot of times we're, we're, not, we're not given that opportunity. And that's really what it's about. You know, to achieve equal pay in that way, we just need equal investment. And so could you tell me about your business together yeah. and how that's playing a role in, in yeah. solving this issue. Yeah, so Together is um, a media and commerce company. Myself, Alex Morgan, Chloe Kim, Simone Manuel, four you know, highly successful women's athletes in, in their different fields coming together and essentially putting you know, our money where our mouth is and creating this company, which you know, it, it does a lot of different things. It's taken on its own life, which is amazing, but the start of it was to tell stories to get content out that was about women in sports, that young girls could connect with, women could connect with, because a big part of the advancement of women's sports is the storytelling. It's the connection, the connection to the athlete, the connection to the story. I always joke, it's like, I didn't know anything about cheerleading. And then I watched Cheer on Netflix and I was like, oh man, like I'm into this, you know, like, oh, when's the next competition? But it's, it's, it's small, but it goes such a long way. And women's sports hasn't really had anything on a regular basis, like literally an everyday basis where there's been that kind of coverage. And that's where together the company is able to just, you know, blow the ceilings off. So what challenges did you face starting together? You know, it's, it's not that it's been smooth sailing. Um, you know, I think uh, Jess Robertson, one of our other founders, she touched on this in the panel. It was, I thought it was a perfect answer. The challenge is that you want to make sure you're doing, you're telling the stories right, um, that you're telling them with care, the care they deserve. Because these are people's lives and you don't want to do it um, carelessly. So that's both a challenge, but as Jess said, also a privilege that people are putting their stories in our hands and allowing us to do that. So um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. So let's take it back a little bit. Sure. Did you always know that you would be a star, that you would have financial stability? No. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting because um, a very common life, the, the, or the life of a WNBA player, you play in the WNBA in the summer, you, know, you earn a little bit of cash. It's not that it's nothing. But it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't setting you up for life necessarily. 
And then we would all go over to Europe or to foreign countries and play overseas. And that's actually where I earned most of my money throughout my basketball career. I played in Russia for a very long time and you know, from a financial standpoint, it did. It set me up for life and it allowed me to do other things. But, you know, and that's why I feel so passionately about where I am now and what role I can play now. It's not going to impact me what I'm doing and the, the, the fights that I'm fighting. It's not going to impact me as a basketball player. Mm-hmm. That ship sailed. But what it can do is maybe help this younger generation um, be able to, to have a living by just playing in the WNBA. Because the more, you know, the more together covers it, the more everybody starts getting on board, the, the bigger the league itself will grow. Um, and from there comes, you know, the financial piece. So I, I want to know your thoughts on, I think of like Angel Reese at LSU. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a smart decision to stay in school and just like collect the sponsorships versus going to the WNBA? Yeah, so interestingly enough, the WNBA does have a rule that, um, I'm not going to get in the nitty gritty, but you can't leave early is basically the rule. There's some like other stipulations where you can based on age, if you've graduated, all these things. But right now, Angel Reese, um, I don't think she was eligible to okay. leave college. But at the same time, you know, that's going to be very specific to each player. You know, Aaliyah Boston, who mm-hmm. had a, you know, a storied career at South Carolina, she actually had an extra year of eligibility and could have stayed in South Carolina, but decided to go. And I think it's that decision with, with NIL now entering the picture and obviously, you know, players are, are making bank off that. It's going to be each individual. So Angel Reese, when the time comes, I'm sure she'll sit down with the people she trusts and kind of, you know, break down what makes sense. Because while there is a lot of value in staying in college mm-hmm. because of the NIL, there's also a lot of value in being a professional and being an adult and kind of building that part of your life. So to each their own, she'll figure it out. So back to you, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> How do you invest your money and what's your plan for generational wealth? Yeah, um, so I try to be, in my, the early parts of my career, I tried to be both strategic with a little bit of risk involved, right? But not, I can never go too far over on the risk part. So for me early, it started off with property. I knew right away, I was like, all right, first thing I, need, I want to do is put my flag in the sand. I mentioned earlier I was playing overseas, so it was less about me living in this apartment and more about having property, having something under my name. From there, a couple years later, I looked for my second place. And now, sitting here now, I have, I'm like, one, two, three, I have four properties. Um, and so that was kind of like the first step into, into investment. Mm-hmm. And then what I've learned from that is, okay, if you're gonna venture out outside a property, I actually invest in four, soon to be five restaurants in Boston. Okay. I know, and people always, people always raise their eyebrows, they're like, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> um, and the short of it is, it has nothing to do with restaurants. It has nothing to do with food, it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. What it is is, a friend of mine growing up, someone that I have complete trust in, came to me, and my father actually, and was like, hey, this is what I wanna do, and I would love for you to be a part of it. And because I trusted him and because I believed in him, he could have been coming to me talking about opening up a zoo. Mm -hmm. He could have been talking about opening up a clothing store. It wouldn't have mattered. And that's when I kind of realized, and it's it's worked. It's been great. You know, for him it was restaurants. And that's when I realized like, oh, people. The the key ingredient is people. You're investing in people, not just the businesses they're, you know, presenting to you. Um, So that's kind of like what I've learned in, in terms of generational wealth. It's just, you know, I. It's just about being smart and, and kind of making sure you're putting things to the side and retirement. Um, you know, I don't have, have kids right now, so the mindset is maybe a little bit different <laughs> than if I did. <laughs> but, uh, you know, TBD on that. <laughs> well, before I let you go, I do want to know, what is the biggest money mistake you've made? Ooh. Um, I actually did invest in another restaurant. Okay. I must have thought like, oh, this is easy. These first <laughs> ones worked. Um, and it eventually ended up going under. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that it was a terrible investment. It's just sometimes things don't work out and you got to be willing to uh, to take the hit, I guess. Yeah. You have to be smart. Don't overextend yourself so if that hit comes, you're, you know, in trouble. Um, but that's where the calculated risk comes into play. Well, Sue, what advice do you have for young girls who want to be like you, who want to <laughs> enter the WNBA, who yeah. want to start their own companies? Yeah, I think um, where I've landed with, with kind of advice to younger generations is, You know, what got me to where I am now is being as true to myself as possible, Um, appreciating, you know, what I bring to the table as unique and important, right? 
and with that, trying not to compare myself to others. Uh, the best way to explain this for me is I always joke, I've had a decorated career, I've won multiple gold medals, you name it, and yet if you put five of me on the basketball court at the same time, it would be the worst team ever. Because you can't just have five of the same exact thing. Right. You need, you know, you need different players, different skill sets, different strengths. Um, so I say I tie that all back to when you're a player on a team, when you're a player, not a player, sorry, when you're, you know, um, someone in a in, in a meeting or in an office or whatever it is, um, you know, it takes diversity. And so when you you compare yourself and try to be like someone else, you're doing everybody a disservice. You got to bring yourself to the table, and I think that's so important. I love that. I may yeah. steal that. <laughs> All yours. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. Thank you.